Greetings and welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ogo, my co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So, Prodigy episode, I'm guessing 15. It's 15, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I still don't think this is still season one, but they, they're <laughs> calling it season one. Yeah. Well, you don't, you change the numbers back down to one when you start a second season, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of Okan on here. <clears throat> yeah. Del's yeah. getting jealous. I was, um, yeah, I was wondering how long they were going to keep doing this, but uh, yeah, I guess we found out. Yeah, I, I kind of wish we just held on to him for the rest of the season. Yeah, just yeah. stick him around. Who knows how long that'll be? 30 more episodes, I yeah. guess. Season it's, one. Yeah. <laughs> season one. Yeah. I'll hit the 100 mark for sure. Yeah. Oh, kind of. You know, for someone who's been on our ship for such a short time, it stings that the crew's taken to him so quickly. But I get it. I mean, look at him. He knows who he is. Pretty useful. I mean, well, yeah, still he's shady, been, but <laughs> yeah, he's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I, I don't understand later though why the Romulans just let him leave. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, okay, we the, believe this the, kid. The, the purple guy <laughs> says you're not the captain, yeah. so you can just go now. I knew they were going to assume it was him. Yeah. So they go to a space elevator. Mm -hmm. And what happens at space elevators, Jeff? Well, nobody uses the actual elevator of them. They just jump down. They just jump off. We keep doing this. This is, yeah. uh, I, I guess. I guess they used it to go up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is a Star Trek thing now. Like, yeah. you just assume when there's a space elevator, they'll be base jumping. You no, know, I'm just a fan of space elevators. I mean, it takes you outside of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, a technological marvel. Uh, this planet, uh, I don't know what else it has other than a doctor, because she's advertised everywhere that yeah. she does genetic like changing stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is illegal everywhere else, Yeah, but nothing's illegal in the neutral zone. No, no. And we're still... God. Like, the, the Romulan Warbird's right there, Jeff. <laughs> they clearly crossed the neutral zone to get to where the Dauntless is, and uh, I just... Mm, it's very silly. Yeah. That's very silly. Yeah. Admiral, I urge you to reconsider. We have kids on a disabled ship in the neutral zone, and Romulans on our doorstep who want nothing more than to steal our technology. We're facing our own Kobayashi Maru. Jane, we makes a call. Yep. Calls Jellico. Jellico. I kept seeing his photo everywhere, like animated Jellico. I'm just like, when is he coming? When is he coming? And he's still right, but also kind of a dick about it. Yeah. 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 Four shifts really did make more sense. Mm hmm. We look back on that now and we realize it's true. Mm -hmm. We weren't ready to hear the truth at no. the time. No. no. <laughs> as untrustworthy as the Romulans can be, we're finally working towards peace. The Dauntless is not to enter the neutral zone, even to retrieve the protostar. So they visit this doctor, mm -hmm. um, who coincidentally is the one that Tokana had to deliver goods to yep. and lost. Yep. And, uh, she but she will... just blames the Federation and then it's Kay. Yeah. Yeah, nobody cares. She got really interested when she saw Del, mm -hmm. and she's all like, I'm like, is she going to experiment on him? Mm hmm But, like... Kind of did. Yeah. But what benefit was that to her? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I like, guess he paid her. Do we yeah. have money? I could understand, like, maybe if she took a bunch of genetic samples from people and be like, oh, that'd be worth it for her research, but mm -hmm. we, uh, we learned all about Del now. Yeah. He, uh, I guess, are you going to admit that you're wrong? He's no longer the Omega Particle? No, no, he's not the Omega Particle. But they were upset. They were upset with him, I guess, because he was genetically modified. He was a Soong kind of thing. Brent yeah, when, and when she's just like, oh, everything. yeah, like, it wasn't Eric, but it was similar. Or something like it, was that. The, it was the Enterprise one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's like, Jesus, can we stop with the Soongs? <laughs> I love Brent Spiner, but my God. There's going to be another versions? one. There's going to be another one in Picard. Yeah, we all, know Spiner's yeah. in it. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe no, he'll no, no. I know who he is. Okay. Do you want me to spoil it for sure. you and everybody? Sure. Lore. It's lore. Yeah. Is he doing lore? Yeah. All right. What happened to lore in TNG? Guess we're gonna find out. Okay. She changes Dell. He starts talking in a deeper voice. Uh, he mm -hmm. grows a goatee. He yep. has to push a button to activate it. Yeah. Which is weird. Which looked a lot like the button the uh, the ensign had at the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah, like identical. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, that's why they introduced so, it to us. Yeah, so they're using the same kind of attack. He's 
suddenly he can do martial arts and speak in big words. Even though he was doing that kind of before he pushed the button. Mm-hmm. And he takes out all the Romulans that show up. Because uh, they basically took the ship really quickly. Yep. Um, and they're like, ah, shit, we need the captain's clearance codes because we can't mm-hmm. act shit, even though we're the Tal Shiar. Yeah. <laughs> And then they're just like, oh, we're going to take the captain and go for uh, Okana, which makes sense. Yeah. That's who I would have thought. Mm-hmm. And then Dell's a genius with his super intelligence now. He's like, ha, 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 it's me. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's him. Yeah. Just bake my way toys. Yeah. So no. Okana gets to walk away. Yeah. Like, Tal Shiar is just a little different in this kid show. A little different. <laughs> Everybody's a little different. It's a little simpler. Yeah. <laughs> you think he's the captain? Okay, great. Uh, now that you've all found each other, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Good luck! Get on the space elevator and actually use it and head mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Uh, lightning strikes. Um, Murph's bloodlust cannot be quenched. Yeah, Murph got out of his hamster ball and just jumped really, really high and he's, kicked some ass. He's shooting phasers everywhere. Yeah, he's kicking ass. He's just launching torpedoes with his butt. Like, this guy is bloodthirsty. I was worried, but then he jumped back in the hamster ball like a cute, adorable little puppy. So I was like, all right. I don't know, man. Murph. Oh, is it finally going to happen? Murph, <laughs> Murph's starting to scare me a little. Is he no longer a good boy? I don't know. He's starting to scare me a little. Yeah. Looks like we found our new security officer. And they get to the ship and they uh, fix uh, Dell. Yeah. He even had like balconiers and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, Janeway had fired some torpedoes. Mm-hmm. But then when she realized the kids made it back, she diverted them quickly. Yeah. And then she's all surprised. She's like, who are these kids? Mm-hmm. Well, she's they're, they're trained by this like very average captain. Yeah, they're trained by you. <laughs> <laughs> they're the best. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so this is why they're already lost. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Know. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what their mission is anymore. There is no barrier we cannot overcome. You weren't the only one sent back to find the ship. I always fall for the ones from the future. So the ensign is from the future, Chris. Looks like. And she's also of the Diviner's race. Mm-hmm. And pushed... she's got a Grievous. Yeah. yeah. I was really, like, on board for, like, her going into the neutral zone. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, you should do that. And then Jane was like, oh, well, we, we can't do that. That's against uh, Federation orders. When have you ever followed the Prime Direct? There is a whole future <clears throat> organization that has to fix Janeway problems. Yes, yeah, they have a Janeway division. Yeah. Uh, but also, apparently, we can just fire torpedoes right in there. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That doesn't break the awards at all. That's fine. Yeah. Natural disaster. Ship going in? <laughs> no. Shooting, actively shooting weapons into there? <laughs> fine. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. We have no choice. Oh, they also activated uh, Dreadnought, mm-hmm. which I was worried that she was going to turn into Dreadnought. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like, because uh, that happens to me all the time, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You ever watch Tales from the Crypt? Oof. Maybe. Oh, like, a bit. I'm talking about like the movie, the one where it's like three stories. One had John Lithgow on a plane, which was the same oh. as the Shatner on the plane. Okay. And there's a gargoyle on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's this special one, uh, gargoyle one, where uh, this woman, where this guy sees the gargoyle kill somebody, mm-hmm. and then he like ends up dating the woman, and then he's like, oh, you can only live if you don't tell anyone. And then after he has kids, he tells the woman. Mm-hmm. And then she turns into a gargoyle, and the kids turn into gargoyles, and they're just like, I loved you. <laughs> and they kill him. That's super weird. Yeah. I always thought I th- thought that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I always suspect. Activate that. Dreadnought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I never tell them any secrets. Dreadnought, activate. You promised you'd never tell. No. Thank you. That will not me, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this was a pretty good episode. Yeah. We, got, we progressed some things. Uh, we learned more about Dal. We had some good action. We had some some fun bits. Um, 
and we played a little fast and loose loose with some of the, the logic but we really did play fast and loose with the genetics i was just like yeah so what just off screen she performed an operation that quick <laughs> yeah yeah but no it's fine you know it's, it's, it's just little bite-sized kind of star trekky bits that we're getting here and it, it's good for what it is yeah no mm -hmm. i uh, i enjoyed it i thought it was a pretty good episode uh I do think the parents now have to have the talk with their kids because they were inside Murph when they went up into the atmosphere, and I'm just like, are they are they inside Murph? Ugh, ugh. No, we're, Murph's not gonna have He's to just, have to have that talk, parents. He just has an airtight seal. Yeah. Because there's no atmosphere. <laughs> really, I'm not gonna say it. Yeah. Not gonna say it, Chris. Yeah. Good joke though. Good no. one. I'll tell you after. Ugh. As always, guys. Thanks for watching.